All right. So someone in my Discord asked me if I could explain, like, when do you use the just a normal JavaScript variable when you're dealing with React applications versus when do you use like the use state hook? And I think in order to answer that question, you have to kind of understand like how does state work in React? How does re-rendering work in React? So the goal of this video is like, I want to actually just show you and give you a quick overview of like how the heck does React deal with state? How does it know when to re-render? And in order to kind of explain that, I'm actually going to take a different approach than probably most people. I'm going to go and I'm going to open up a new JavaScript file and we're going to just talk about some JavaScript, right? So if we have a variable here called count equal to zero, and then we had a function called render, and that function returned like, I don't know, my count is interpolate that count variable. And then I went, went ahead and just call that function with the console log. So let's just run that file. And notice that it prints out my count is zero. Okay. So this is basically, you know, it's an oversimplified version of React, but this is kind of how React works, right? You have a functional, you have a function, and that function does something, like it can run computations, and then finally it returns some JSX, right? So when we're dealing with React, that's kind of how it just works. And if I call this multiple times, I mean, it's just going to print out the same count over and over and over again. Um, and then if I were to go ahead and just like increment the count right here, so every time this render function calls, I increment the count by one, that should also make sense what's happening. Every time you call this render function, I'm just incrementing some external variable. In this case, you can count this as like a global variable if you want to, but you kind of have to understand how closures work. This function, this block has access to this variable and can increment it and decrement it and do whatever it wants with it because of how closures work. So now if I were to render this three times, notice that the count keeps incrementing and I return a new string that has a new count. So you might ask, okay, why am I showing you this? Why is that related to React? Well, it turns out um, React is kind of similar where you make components with functions and those functions can have some type of state. And you can technically, you can have the components access outside variables. But the main difference is that you don't have control over when stuff re-renders, right? React has hooks set up to listen for when state's changing. And that is how it knows how to recall your function. So if you imagine right here, all of this is handled by the React framework or library, whatever you want to call it. So we don't actually tell you know React, hey, re-render me. You just change some state, and that will re-render your component. I want to take the same example. I want to show you some, some caveats with React. So if I were to go to this you know app.jsx, I have a Vite app set up over here, which is running on this port. And if I go ahead and just do a very similar example where we have some count up here, I'm actually going to comment out that state right now because I want to kind of emphasize a point that I think it's important to understand. If I were to just make a button here called click me, and this button, when you click it, it actually increments a, that count variable. So I'm going to make it call a function, and I'll say count plus plus. And what we're going to show you, or what I'm going to try to show you, I don't know if I'm going to do a good job at it, but I can basically put a debugger here. And I can put a debugger right here above this. Okay, so hopefully you understand like how the debugger works. It's a way to kind of step through your code and see how stuff is changing. So the let me let me show you what's going on here. So if I go back to my React application and I click on that button, which is right in the center of the screen, I should get a debugger that stops. And if I were to look at the state of count, right? If I go over to count, which I believe I could just go ahead and add a watch here. So I'm gonna say watch on count. Notice that it starts at zero. But when I clicked on this button, I'm actually going to run some code, which is going to increment that count by one. And now this count variable outside of the component is actually incremented by one. So the reason I'm showing you this is like React has the ability to update and modify any type of normal JavaScript variable, right? This is just a function. So you can do exactly what I just showed you here inside of React. There's nothing stopping you from it. But the main takeaway is that when you don't have the actual use state hook being used to keep track of state, React doesn't know when to re-render. So if I go ahead and run this, um, actually it won't show anything. Let me go ahead and print out count here. So I'm gonna say count, and this is how you interpolate in React. You do these curly braces. But let me show you that again and get rid of the debuggers. When I click on this, the count is not getting re-rendered. Remember, the actual count of this variable, like if I were to console log this, this is indeed getting updated. Every time I click on this, you'll see it prints out one, two, three, four, five down here. So we know that the variable in JavaScript is incrementing, but React just doesn't know when to re-render the page. All right, so with all that being said, like I hope you kind of have a good understanding of like, you know, React, React is basically just like functions that can do stuff. And they can basically act the same way with a JavaScript or JSX file. 
But the main thing I want to kind of share with you is that React doesn't know how to actually re-render because you're not hooking into the internals of React, right? So if you wanted to potentially let React know that, hey, I need to actually re-render, you can actually do something like this. I'm going to show you like a really quick hack. And again, this is all for demonstration purposes. So you have a better understanding of how like state and re-rendering works in React. So again, if I were to just go ahead and call this re-render function here, and I'm going to pass it math.random, what this is going to do is whenever you have the use state hook in a component, and whenever you call the setter function, that tells the lower level like logic of React, hey, this whole component changed. So I need to go back and re-render it and probably do some reconciliation and update the DOM, depending on if any of these, you know, shadow DOM nodes change or virtual DOM. I don't know what you call it. I think it's a virtual DOM. So if I were to do this, like, again, this is not like how you'd potentially do it with a counter, but I just want to show you that whenever you have a use state setter and you call it with a new value, React is going to re-render your page. So now I can click this and you see that the count actually updates on the page. Okay. So understanding that I think is like one of the main takeaways of understanding like when does React re-render your stuff? Okay. Now, obviously, there's an issue with this, right? So the main issue is if I were to make this into a separate component, like I'll just make a new component called counter. And I'll just go ahead and call this counter here and go ahead and make that counter. Actually, let me just do this. I'll export that. Um, so if I keep all of this same code and I go ahead and make this a div, and now if I go back to the main app.jsx, instead of having all of this, I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple counters like so. So I'm going to make, you know, I'll put three counters here. Now I don't need access to any of this stuff, but I will, um, I will do something a little bit different. So, all right, so that's going to show the button three times. But I want to show you something really strange. When I click on these buttons, it does re-render this component because the, the state here is only telling this counter, this one individual counter to re-render. But these other components don't re-render. Now, another strange thing I'm going to show you is because that we're sharing this, this higher level count variable, all three of these counter components are actually bound in rendering the same count state, right? So if I go ahead and click on this one, notice it goes straight to seven. This will go to eight. This will go back to nine. And like, notice how it just, it's all sharing the same counter um, just because of how JavaScript works. But the main takeaway I'm trying to show you is that you can actually have like external state, right? You can have an external state library that's holding onto your JavaScript variables, your JavaScript objects and state. And typically you like, you can connect or do some type of hook that'll tell React when to re-render when those external things change, okay? So with all that being said, like I hope you kind of understand that like you can still have variables outside of React. It's just that they're not bound into React and React doesn't know how to re-render them. So obviously the proper way to do this is we don't want this count externalized because now all three of these counters are sharing the same thing. We actually just want to use the count state. So I'm going to say like count set count here. I'm going to set this equal to zero. And instead of doing this weird hack where I call like re-render with a math.random, you can just go ahead and say like set count and I'll just say count plus one. Okay. I, and I know you guys are going to be like, well, why don't you use the callback here? It's fine. Like it's just, it's just a lesson. So now if I go back and I do this, like everything works properly. Every single component here, there's three components. In fact, if I were to hover over these, you'll see that we have three separate React components. If I go to the Components tab, I have three counters, and all of those have different count states. And the main difference is that now I'm actually just using, I'm, I'm just using the baked-in state of React and putting my count directly in there so that when I click on and increment this count, that individual component is going to update. So going back to the original question that my Discord user asked me or my Discord member asked me is like, when do you use state versus just a normal variable? It kind of boils down to like, is your variable changing and do you need to render that out to the UI at all, right? If you have to render it out to the UI and it never changes, you could literally put it up here. Like I could just say const my name is equal to Bob and I could just render that out here, right? Perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the moment that you need to actually dynamically change this for whatever reason, or if you need to have different logic run side effects when my name changes, then you're going to have to put it in state, right? I'm going to have to pull it, pull it down here and say set name. This will be Bob by default. And now, like I'm going to go render out name here. 
If I ever needed to change this, so for example, let's say every time you called set name, we take name, we append the count to it. Like just some stupid example, but notice that like whenever you need to dynamically change anything that's on the page or a value, it more than likely needs to be in your use state hook. So another thing that you will always see um, in React or often see in React is this idea of like, do you put the constant here or do you put the variable here, right? And again, like if you're trying to create a variable that's derived off of the other stuff, right? So for example, if I wanted to instead put like computed name, this is considered like a derived variable, right? So if I wanted to make the name equal to name plus count or something silly like this, I mean, this is just like a really basic example, but if you wanted to do something like this and then you wanted to render out that computed name here, let me just go ahead and get rid of that. So every time I click the count button, I want to basically render out the Bob with the count. Let me refresh my page. All right. So again, like what is the purpose of this? Well, sometimes you need to take in multiple state variables and you need to aggregate them together or run some type of logic based on their, their current value at that point in time. And you need to kind of, kind of compute like a new value for So for example, let's say you wanted to I don't know, you had an, an array of numbers. So instead of count, I have like numbers, set numbers. And I'm gonna get rid of this whole like name example. And every time you click on this button now, I'm just gonna go ahead and append a new number. So another really weird thing in React is like, you have to do this type of thing whenever you want to append a number to an array. Like in order for React to know when you're trying to re-render something or when something changes, it actually checks like the a shallow reference of your, your array, right? So you have to pass in a brand new reference. So when you do a bracket like this in JavaScript, that's going to be a new array reference. And the fact that we do dot, dot, dot numbers is basically taking all the current values of the numbers array and just putting it right in here into a brand new array. So the whole reason we do this, we do this with arrays and objects is so that React knows that like, hey, this is a brand new array and we need to like re-render it. And let me just emphasize that. If I say numbers.push here and I go ahead and push in one and I try to just re-render numbers. Again, this is like a good example of like why this won't work. Let me do this. So I'm basically going to show those numbers on the page and just join them with a comma. And every time you click on this button, I'm just going to push a new one into the numbers array. So if I do this, notice that absolutely nothing happens, like nothing is rendering to the page because again, you're not changing the reference of numbers. So you have to actually do something like this and pass it a brand new reference for this to actually like update. And this is all because of like React being super immutable, like they didn't want you to mutate state. If you use something like view or svelte, like this is where you can do something like let numbers is equal to zero and then, or something like this. And you could simply just push it, right? But React's a little bit different. Everything is immutable in React. So the only way that you can tell React that, hey, like there's a change and you need to update is you have to pass it a new reference. So that's kind of how that works. And again, like going back to my original thing I was trying to explain is the derived state or the computed state, right? So if I wanted to make the sum of all the numbers, right? So I'm gonna say const sum is equal to numbers reduce. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just add up all the numbers like this. And I believe that's how you can get the sum using a reducer or using the reduce function. I'm gonna go ahead and print out the sum here. Okay, so now every time I click it, it's actually just summing up all the numbers together, which acts as another counter. But if I were to look at the actual element, the only state we're storing is like an array of a bunch of ones, and I just happen to sum them together. So the reason this works is every time you update that numbers array, React is going to re-render this counter component. It's going to rerun this whole function. And it's going to pull the latest value from state for this like numbers hook. So in this case, it's going to be an array of, I don't know, 15, 16 ones. And then it basically runs this code here, which is going to sum them all up. And then we print that out to the screen. Okay, so that's kind of how React is working. It just keeps on running the function over and over again and reruns all your code and recomputes everything. So this is why also like you might see something like react.memo where we don't want to keep on running this over and over again unless like something has actually changed. But that's kind of another topic. I'm not going to get into that. But you, you don't really need to use you don't need to use memo that often unless you have like really large lists of stuff or you're doing really heavy computation in the front end, which obviously you probably shouldn't be doing in the first place. All right, so we talked about date. 
We talked about how React knows when to render, and it really all boils down to using this use state hook. If you're using functional React components, we talked about how state can actually be externalized into variables up here. So if you're using like a third-party state management library, you could potentially be accessing some global state. And then all you need to do is figure out how to like force this component to re-render. And a lot of times, like if you're using something like Redux or something, or like the old version of Redux before hooks, they might have like a higher order component where they actually call like a connect function. So like you might have seen this before where down here you might say like export connect of counter or something like that. Um, and basically that's just, you know, it's a way for having this external state to hook into React to tell React when it needs to re-render. Very similar to like this hack that I added here, but they're probably doing something a little bit more elegant to be more proficient. So yeah, with all that being said, I mean, I think some of the main takeaways you need to understand about like state and React is that if you ever need to update or if you ever notice in the page like stuff is just not rendering or stuff is not updating, then it's more than likely that, like you're not properly reduce if an empty array. So I need to pass this zero. Yeah, I do have a little bug. I just need to pass this zero here to fix that. Um, and now it's working again. So if anytime in React, like you notice that like there's stuff that's just not updating, like you have a function that you're clicking or you're calling when you click something and you notice that your page is just like showing an old value, um, more than likely it's because you're not properly updating state and you're not telling React the way that React needs to know that, hey, something has changed. Um, another thing that you've probably seen a lot is if I wanted to basically, um, let me just go ahead and do this. Let's say every time you click this button, you wanted to pin four ones to it. Okay, this is another important lesson about state and how React works. If I run this, notice that it only increments by one each time. But you expect it to like, you know, render and push in four ones every time and increment by four, right? But the issue with React is that this state setter is actually asynchronous. So when you call it, this numbers thing is not going to update immediately, right? This is like a, a snapshot in time, a frozen copy in time of like what the numbers array looks like. So even though you're calling this thing four times, numbers here is actually going to be set to the exact same array. And like you're really just appending one to a blank array four times in a row. So if you wanted to get around this, you actually need to pass the setter of use state a callback. And this is kind of the approach we do a lot where you pass out a callback, you get previous numbers, and you use whatever this value is in the actual callback here, right here when you're generating the new array. Um, so if I were to go ahead and just do that three times, or four times, now when I click it, it's going to increment by four every time. Okay, so this is another issue that a lot of people run into and I ran into before, which is kind of hard to understand like what the heck is going on, like why is stuff not rendering. And yeah, that's basically how React works. So welcome to the uh, overly complex convoluted land of React. I hope you guys learned something about this and you know a little bit more about state and how to update state and when React decides to re-render stuff and not re-render stuff. And uh, anyway, if you want to join my Discord and ask me questions directly, feel free to. There's a community of other people learning how to code. So you can go there, you can ask questions and someone will hopefully help you out. I'm trying to build a community of really, you know, a lot of people who are like eager to help others. And uh, yeah, like always, leave a comment, subscribe, press the like button, and uh, have a good day and happy coding.